Okay, now, as a parts driver, I'm actually uh, going to a lot of dealerships that I've never been to before, and even though I work for one specific dealership, I have been to countless brands of dealerships. I've gone to a lot of dealerships in the area and even outside of the area, and right now I just wanted to take the time to say that I just delivered a part to a Mercedes dealership in Wexford, PA, and that dealership, which is known as Bobby Rawl, Mercedes-Benz, um, is actually the dealership where uh, YouTuber Autovlog is he has been here and he ordered a new Mercedes from this dealership and actually at this point in time I think it's on its way over so it should be here uh, soon but um, can't really see the front of the building right now but there's the sign out front and uh, the buildings behind me so I have to get back to uh, Ohio but I just thought that that'd be kind of cool to throw into one of these vlogs. I don't know what vlog this is going to go in, but I am at the dealership that has been seen on another YouTube channel, and if you follow Auto Vlog, then you know exactly where I'm at. So, just thought that was kind of cool. I wanted to take the opportunity to to document that. Haven't been in the showroom. Um, I did notice that there's a car hanging on the wall uh, through the window. Um, so. That's it. I have to get back now. It's also a very big dealership. So you can see building it's very long there it is right over there hey guys what's up welcome to this installment of Mike's vehicle vlogs um, today this vlog is probably going to be a little short um, because it's actually on a video that I had the idea of talking about for a while just because it, it is one of the more memorable vehicles from my childhood that I can remember but I didn't really have anything to kind of represent the vehicle today I didn't have any I have nothing I have no keys I have no manuals I have absolutely nothing but thanks to the power of some old home video footage I was able to actually dig up some video of this vehicle. I actually picked up uh, some home videos at my from my mom's house, and I've been in the process for a while now of trying to convert them digitally so that way, you know, these will always be around. And um, I picked up a, a batch yesterday, and I started going through them particularly looking for this footage because I I remembered after a while that there was some footage of this vehicle uh, from back in the day <laughs> that we had and I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to be able to find it uh, but this tape here this this has that footage on it so I can actually show you guys what this vehicle looked like in its prime I want to apologize for a couple of things real quick before I move forward. The first thing is this squeaky chair. The squeak is progressing quite annoyingly. And the air conditioner because it is hot today um, and unfortunately I don't have a quieter way to keep the room cool. So the air conditioner is on. Hopefully it's not really coming out too bad. But it's there. I'm sorry. So I'm going to talk about the Mazda MPV. And the Mazda MPV was a minivan or a multi-purpose vehicle, which is what the MPV part of it stood for. And it was introduced in America, for America actually, even though Mazda um, produced it, it was not introduced into other countries until after the first couple years it was here in the States. So Mazda actually designed this for the um, 
the American automotive market, and it came out for the 1989 model year. Um, and this van was, honestly, I think it was really unique. You don't see the first generation MPVs too often anymore, and that's another reason why I'm excited that you know it's actually I have the footage to, to show it to you guys. Um, the exact one that we had. Um, it was around the time where, you know, other um, automotive companies were coming out with the minivan. Of course, Chrysler had already introduced, you know, the Dodge Caravan and the Plymouth Voyager. Um, a year later, it would introduce the Chrysler Town and Country, and it was just a, a time where all of these automotive companies were trying to get in on the minivan game. And I think the MPV might have been one of the more successful ones, even though it really wasn't like your traditional minivan. And as you're going to see in the video here in a second, the original MPV did not have a sliding door. It had one rear passenger door that opened up like a typical door, um, which was, again, it was pretty unique. So ours, our MPV, I don't know exactly what year it was. I want to say... It was a 90. Um, I don't know why that sticks out in my mind. Uh, mind you, I was like five years old <laughs> when we got this uh, vehicle, and you'll also see that here in this in this video also. But the um, I'm I'm almost positive it was either an 89 or a 90. Um, more so, it was a 90, and it was the very first van that my family had owned um, and as I kind of explained in a previous vlog we've had the Plymouth Voyager we've had two Plymouth Voyagers we for a very short time had like an actual Dodge Caravan uh, for maybe a few days but it was actually a terrible van and it was leaking fluids and all kinds of stuff so we didn't have that one for too long um, We've had uh, a Ford Windstar, which I might talk about in a later video. But this one here, the MPV, was the original minivan for the family. Let's take a look at the 1990 Mazda MPV minivan. So this is actually footage I'm pretty sure that my, my father had filmed um, the day, either the day we brought it home or a couple days shortly after because it did have temporary tag on the back which makes this video even more awesome. Um, just the fact that this this is being filmed as the van was still very new to us and still very new in general. There's actually a station wagon sitting out in front of the house which I want to say maybe like I think it's a Ford Crown Victoria station wagon, or uh, what was the other one called, like the LTD or something. I don't know, but that was ours, and that this minivan here, the MP3, MPV, <laughs> is replacing that station wagon. You can see the color of this MPV is like this dark maroon, and a lot of pictures that I've seen from this, you know, while trying to actually look things up with the MPV, was in this color. So this might have been one of the more common colors. For this car being a 1990, it's actually a really good looking vehicle. For, for a lot of vehicles um, that were out in that time period that retained a lot of square shapes and and such, there were a lot of them that didn't really look as cool as the MPV did. Um, uh, there's me. I'm getting ready to move this lawn chair. Um, I thought maybe I can just get away with laying it flat, but I decided to, um, you know, kind of move it out of the way somewhat so give it up for for little me and but this van just looked awesome it looked like it had high ground clearance um, you know to this day I think this would be uh, a very interesting and fun vehicle to to drive um, if you could actually find them like this I remember the inside of this van very well actually and uh, you know I've got a couple of stories that I can talk about. Um, I, I do remember the times where I'd be in the front of the car and my feet wouldn't really touch the ground <laughs> because I was, you know, so small. Um, sorry for the fade in and outs. I don't know why my, my parents always thought, you know, in between scenes they can 
fade in and out, but here's the back seat. As you can see how the door opens, um, it's just like a common door. There's no door on the other side, um, as a lot of vans in those back in the day had. There was just one door on the passenger side of the vehicle. And in the back here, you can actually see there's a lot of room. Um, I don't think this one came with the third row seat from the looks of it. So it was more so just the second row bench seat and then a huge cargo area in the back. So this thing was actually really roomy without a third row. Um, though I know with the third row you could have folded them down or such. I don't think the third row was removable if you had it though. Um, now this you know, vehicle being in 1990, you can see, uh, didn't really have anything powered. It had manual windows, uh, possibly manual locks. Uh, it did not have an airbag. It had a three-spoke steering wheel right there. Um, I think from what I can see, the mirrors may have been powered because the switch is right underneath the gauge cluster. And then finally, the actual dashboard, which um, yeah, there's really not a whole lot I can say about the dashboard. I love the way the dashboard's set up, like how the air controls are so simple up above there, and the um, it had a cassette player, and there was a storage bin down below. Uh, no glove box, uh, just a little fold-out uh, pocket that the owner's manual would sit in and such, a tachometer and such. Um, I'm going to try to see what the mileage is um, on here and maybe try to zoom in. I want to say it was like 20-some thousand, but... I have to um, maybe try to focus in a little bit more on that. And uh, here's me. Uh, so let's give it up for my very first pair of glasses. That is the very first pair of glasses that I ever had. Um, so hooray for my glasses. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to zoom in on the footage here. I'm trying to see maybe what the mileage really is, but because of how you know, the camera is moving and such, it's, it's really hard for me to decipher, but I mean, it looks, it looks to me like it, it's 27,000 something, 27,500, I don't know, it was, it was still pretty new as you can tell. So as you can see, I was five years old and I remember many rides to preschool in this van and being dropped off and, um, it had the cassette player and I remember we had one specific cassette that had a broken end on it and if the tape was stuck in on the wrong side it would get stuck in the tape player and my dad would have to take the stereo apart to get it out every time um, <laughs> unless it was flipped uh, in the opposite direction so I, I remember that very well. Um, if, if memory serves me right I think this also had the V6 engine um, the MPV at this time either came, I think, with a 2.6 from what I read, a 2.6 liter four cylinder, or the three liter V6. And I'm pretty sure ours had the V6. Um, you could also get all wheel drive in this van. Ours did not have all wheel drive, uh, but they did have a four wheel drive version. And from what I read, it, it's not really like today's all wheel drive vehicles. Um, you had to actually hit a button on the shifter to get it into four wheel drive. So it wasn't like an automatic, um, you know, slip of the traction four wheel drive system. It was, um, yeah, it had to be turned on from what I was reading. Uh, but if you didn't have four wheel drive, it was actually a rear wheel drive van. Um, ooh, thunder. It's been storming all night minivans that were like really tall you that step up and, and kind of like the conversion van type thing but you know those were rear wheel drive also and um, one thing that set the MPV apart from those is it was actually more car like compared to anything else that was a rear wheel drive platform back then uh, for a van so that's one other thing that made the MPV um, unique but you know as, as you've seen in the footage I just think um, you know, the van overall just had a really good look to it, uh, inside and out. It has that nice, um, I don't know, that nice late 80s, early 90s look, but <laughs> it looks good. There's a lot of cars from that time that, like I said, have the square look, and um, they just don't really look good, but this was a good-looking car. Um, 
and I really wish it was easier to find find them like this today, but I love the outside of this car. I loved how the inside was set up. I like, like I said, how the center stack, the climate controls were, were simple, um, and you know, the radio and, and stuff was all nicely neat. Um, it had, a, I think, an 8,000 RPM tack and a speedometer next to it. Your, your coolant temperature gauge and fuel gauges were kind of hidden toward the bottom of the cluster. and um, it, it just had a good look to it. Um, the MPV did receive some changes. I think in 93 it got like a facelift a little bit. And the this generation pretty much was slightly updated. I know the interior was changed at some point. Um, didn't look exactly the same. Um, but then, in I think for the 2000 model year, there was a more up-to-date MPV that was introduced. But they quit making the MPV after 2006. So I think it's still being made overseas, and it's still being sold in other countries and such. But here in the States, um, we do not have the MPV anymore. So uh, while the, the, the second generation MPV for the States looked pretty good. It looked a little sleeker and the, wasn't as boxy looking and stuff. I still think this MPV here was the one that is, uh, in my opinion, the winner. Uh, it's an awesome vehicle. I don't really have anything else to say about this van. That's, like I said, dude, this was short and sweet because um, I was so young. <laughs> I just remember, you know, a lot of rides in this van. Um, we had the van for quite a few years, but that's it. This was the 1990 Mazda MPV minivan. As mentioned, if, if I can find one of these like that, I would love to have one, but very rare. Probably not nearly as good a shape as you would hope. So, probably one of the better cars. I'm pretty sure my mom really liked this one. If you guys enjoyed this vlog, please don't forget to thumbs up comment and subscribe. Uh, also check out Mike's Vehicle Spotlight if you haven't already. Uh, there is a new MVS feature coming out every Saturday. So every Saturday uh, you can expect to see a new Mike's Vehicle Spotlight and yeah just look out for that if you haven't already. Other thing that I want to mention is uh, just make sure that when you subscribe or if you are subscribed to click on the little bell icon uh, on the video page or on my channel. That way you can get notified firsthand when a video is either uploaded or there's any other content changes to the channel. Um, I recently I kind of feel like there's not a whole lot of my uh, videos getting uh, reached to my audience. Um, so I have noticed a change in the uh, in the numbers and the stats and stuff and uh, I know this is actually a, a YouTube wide uh, issue from my understanding uh, so please just make sure that you are signed up for those notifications and then that way you can uh, find out firsthand immediately when a video is uploaded or such uh, so appreciate it guys thanks again hope you enjoyed this uh, short vlog on the Mazda MPV uh, I'm really glad that I was able to make it Again, we can thank good old VHS technology. See? Analog. I'll see you guys next time. So take care. Thanks for watching. And see you.